Oh, no, no, yes. Perfect. I mean, you don't even know yet, but good instincts. Uh, so there is a saying that a problem shared is a problem halved. Do you know this? You don't know that saying? People say it anyway. The boycott's not working. But whenever I hear this saying, I think, hmm, a problem shared is a problem halved. Not for one person. <laughs> one person was just having a normal day. <laughs> and then they got given half of a problem. <laughs> and when you're scaling up from zero problems, half a problem, that, that, that feels like a whole problem. Do you know that I'm 33 and I've just started wearing a, um, a bum bag? I, I bought it here, but I'm not having a crisis. And I've realized there's two main wearing techniques for the bum bag. If you wear your uh, bum bag like this, this, this means uh, I have drugs for everybody. And if you wear your bum bag down here like this, this means uh, I, I have drugs uh, ju just for me. <laughs> but no, I am, I am 33 and it's, uh, it's a, you know, lucky me, it's the perfect age. I, <laughs> I couldn't believe when I found out either. Um, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to admit there was a full year recently where I thought the perfect age was 32, but um, <laughs> sort of changes annually, almost like clockwork. But there's this sort of divide occurring amongst my friends, my nearest and dearest, amongst you know, those of us who are out there and we're living our lives and we're sort of trying to be interested and interesting. And then you've got some other people who are sort of, they've started to take their hand off the wheel and they're thinking actually, you know, uh, no, uh, that's not really where I'm at anymore. So you've got people like me, they're trying to, you know, you're trying to cultivate an interesting life and have fun. And then you've got some people who are like, look, I, I, sort of, I had 33 years to try and create an interesting life, but it didn't really work out. So I've actually, I've started working on a collaboration project with a, another person, and we're going to create a third person. And that is pretty much going to represent our ability to be interesting from here forth. <laughs> so um, it's people like me and, and our parents. <laughs> and and I, I do not, you know, there's probably parents in here this evening. I, it, it's not my intention to be rude. It's truly not. It's, it's actually, it's my, it's my sole intention just to <laughs> say my little jokes, but I... I <laughs> I'm not a monster, I understand the appeal, you know, to make that decision with another person, the person you love, to make something that's half of you and half of them and to, to create an infant and, you know, watch that infant grow into a baby, to a toddler, to a child, to a teenager, to an adult and to imbue someone with, you know, all of your feelings and emotions and to watch them grow into something more than that, something totally independent and, and, and move through the world. I don't doubt that in our lives that is probably the single most rewarding thing that, that we can do. But... For me, you know, to assume that that is of interest to anyone else, it's, it's, a, it's an affront to decency, basically. It's, <laughs> we get it, you did it, you know, move on. Uh, <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's not like, um, you know, it's, because I think as a straight person what happens is the factory settings, what we get, you know, booted up with when they turn the computer on, it's like under the factory settings you've got find partner, settle down, have child. And so what happens is you've got a lot of people moving through life with the factory settings turned on and they're noticing other people have got the factory settings turned on and they're giving each other a thumbs up through exhaustedly <laughs> gritted teeth going, yeah, we're, we're doing it, you know, but that's not enough. And so they start looking around and noticing other people who are the same age but on a different timeline and they're like, oh no, something's off here. And they'll approach you and they'll say, are you having a bit of trouble with the factory settings? <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I just heard you could muck around with the settings. Yeah, no, you, you, do, you, you don't muck around with the settings. They put them in like that at the factory for a reason. Those are the settings. Because the other thing that happens is when you have a child, it gives you a tremendous sense of entitlement to start asking everyone around you when they're going to copy the perfect decisions you've made for your perfect life. It comes from a place of deep security. And if you're doing something different, they'll start to try and coerce you. They'll start trying to fill your head up with big ideas about why you should do it. They'll say, oh, no, that's not a reason not to do it. You've got to do it. 
you have to do it. You know, you got to do it. You got. You, I don't think I have to do it. They go, nah, you do. You got to. You got to do it. Because I've done it. So I'm really set on this trajectory right now. <laughs> and you not doing it's actually giving me <laughs> massive anxiety. So <laughs> you got. You got to do it. And you don't know. Your child could be anything. They could be anyone. They could be the next Greta Thunberg. <laughs> And I hear that, I think, oh, no, no. I mean, I'm not Swedish for a start. I don't even know Mrs. Thunberg. And so long as we're talking Thunberg, I just want to quickly say, as a society, we've got to take it easy on, on Greta. You know, like one teenager in Scandinavia put their hand up and said, whoa, climate change, pretty intense. And everyone else went, oh my God, are you going to take that? That is such a relief. <laughs> Thank you. We've been worried sick, you know. I'm going to sit back. I'm not going to change anything about my lifestyle. I'm going to watch you hopefully catch a plane somewhere so I can cyber bully you for being a hypocrite. <laughs> you piece of shit! <laughs> and if they don't get you on, you know, what your child could be, they'll start championing what their child could be. They'll start saying stuff like, we're so excited. Our little guy could be anything, you know, and I understand, hypothetically, yes, blue sky thinking, anything is possible, but <laughs> let's look at the data. <laughs> you work in real estate, <laughs> and your partner works in marketing, so there's really nothing to suggest between your shared DNA that this child will be anything except <laughs> a massive drain. <laughs> on the already limited resources we're working with, you know, but you can't say that. I mean, you, you can't say anything nowadays. Um, all done. I'm Guy Montgomery. Thank you so much.